the cloud, just in case. I have a feeling because this is a long weekend that there may be some people who, you know, um, Kathy is is traveling, so that's why she couldn't make it. She was like, she thought she would be there way earlier, but it's not the way it happens. Hmm. Yeah, it's busy out there. I don't know. <laughs> it's still surreal. Um, so let's wait till Janet can get back in. So I'm not sure what happened with that. And then we'll start. Or actually, I think we're recording, so we might as well start, I guess, if that's okay. How long do you think your presentation is, just so I can schedule? Um, the tour is probably five to 10 minutes, depending on if you have questions. Mm -hmm. And then I just, I brought a few examples of things to show and I like, and I have photographs of things if people want oh, to see. Um, yes. So um, I figured I'd just like show different things and people can just ask questions and we'll go from there. That sounds great. Okay, so why don't we just, I'm sorry that we're not having more people, but at least it's being recorded. So that is good. Hi there. And um, so we'll just start and um, sounds good. I'm feeling happy that I'm here. So that's, that's nice. Great. All right. I don't know if I can share, let's see. Oh, I, if, if you can't, I can give you permission. Yeah, so I'll let me leave. just, let me uh, do that. Um, make co-host, there you go. Okay, perfect. All right. So I will share, let's see. This is, no, maybe this is what I want. Ooh. Okay, let's see if I have the right thing. Huh. Make that bigger. Okay, can everyone see that? Is it a screen with the- um... I, I can see it. It can, I assume everyone else can, so. It's, it's... It's a glass window. Everyone can see that. Nice. Okay. All right. So let me play that. I may stop it and talk a little bit just so. Mm -hmm. Oops. Well, that wasn't what I wanted it to do. It might also be good to do that because of buffering and um, performance issues. So. Yeah. I, I don't have the greatest Wi-Fi here, but. So this is the hive. This is. L1, which is just below the main floor. And this is the glass windows that you can see into the hive. The window design is actually giant vinyl stickers. It is not etched. So when you enter, there's this reception area. And then these are our 3D printers. So these are, um, 3D printers that use a PLA filament, which is a, a vegetable base. It's actually corn based. And you'll see there's a few examples up there, but it's going to show you it. And so this is it in action. The PLA is recyclable. We don't have a recyclable uh, machine yet, but we hope to. Uh, next up, this right here is our monofab, which is a CNC machine and um, mm. router. And so you can't quite see oops, in it, but it, cre it can create um, circuit boards for Arduinos. And then it can also um, be a router and carve. So, you know, if you had a vintage staircase with spindles that were no longer to be found, you could, re you could reproduce that. You can, Wait, you can, it's that large? This one isn't, but um, we do have one that goes on a table that's not set up yet, but but in reality, you you can. Um, oh. You you know, I mean, you'd probably have to do, I mean, in this one, you'd have to do the spindles and sections because I, I don't think I could get the whole thing, but you could do the decorative parts and then connect it to the middle. It's mean, it. I mean, you know but you could find another monofab that was larger. 
let's say, but I'm just like, I was just trying to give an example of something like useful that you could do with it besides just, you know. You can design a birdhouse, have the pieces routed out and then put it together. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, so this would really be useful for something like that's a big solid piece of wood that will carve that for you in minutes versus the days that it would take. So the next next up is um, yeah, you can see a little bit of our circuit boards in there. Next up are the laser cutters. So we have two. One is the Zing and one is the Glowforge. The Glowforge is um, more hobbyist. You know, it's for um, you can see here it's the laser is engraving the hive design and uh, the Glowforge. Uh, was the number one Kickstarter. Still, and it's never been surpassed. Um, they're still selling them. They are fairly easy to use. They have a camera right here in the lid. You can see your design on the screen. You can so you can align it. We um, ours the exhaust is set up right to both of them, so the fumes and the smoke go right out. You can see the same with this one. So this is more industry industry standard. And the differences really are like an automatic camera versus a manual camera. You have to feed the computer all the information for the Zing, all the settings, the power, the speed, all that. The Glowforge reads a QR code off of its materials or it has presets and all you have to do is pick it and it will pretty much give you all that all set. So it takes a lot of that leg work out. But there are limitations. The Glowforge is uh, has a bed that's 12 by 20. And it needs a half inch margin all the way around. Whereas the Zing's bed is smaller, our particular one is 12 by 16, but you can go all the way to the edges. And the Zing bed, you can raise and lower it. So you could do something that's much thicker. The Glowforge, you, can, you can't go thicker than um, a half an inch. Otherwise, you have to take the bed out and you have to create a base to try to support what you're using, which isn't easy. Mm. And then as we move along, this, I should say, this corner back here, where you can see there's a Weller box uh, with a soldering iron. That's going to be our electronics center. That's most likely getting set up this week because we have someone coming in to help us with that. And um, so there'll be a soldering station here. So you could create those Arduinos that you made in the monofab, solder them together. Uh, there's quite a bit of materials that we have that have to be organized. And then next to that is the roll and vinyl cutter, which most likely will not live there anymore, but it will be moved to a new place. But that's the vinyl cutter and you'll see that in action in just a minute. So again, it's a computer, you feed your design from the computer into the Roland software and it will cut out your stickers um, in no time flat, really fast. We also have a heat press. Uh, we don't have heat press vinyl just yet. We're still working on that. But down the road, we would have heat press vinyl for t-shirts, mugs, um, baseball caps like, and bags, things like that. Plates, I think we can also do plates. Yeah, I don't remember where the icon was. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna play this so you can see vinyl cutter in action. And oh then well, I will talk about the internet. Um, there's the vinyl cutter. There's a tiny blade in there, and it's cutting out your sticker. Unfortunately, it's very hard to see the sticker on the vinyl, but it's okay. Don't worry. It's there it's being cut out. And right behind it here is our form lab, which is also. I'm, a I'm, I'm sorry, Lori. Just one moment. Um, Janet, can you mute yourself? I'm really sorry. Okay, sorry. No, yeah. There we go. Okay. So, vinyl, the form lab, 
is also a 3D printer and it is uh, uses a resin based. So you can see some of the examples up on the wall up here. Uh, there was there were a couple that were in the display. They were more clear or white. It's it gives you much more detail. Form labs were developed right here in Somerville. They um, are used by dentists quite a bit to create crowns. And mm. you may be a little bit familiar with that. It has a lot more. It has a lot more complexity to it because the form lab it creates your design with a laser into the bed of resin. It needs a lot of supports, which then have to be cut off, but it also needs to go in an alcohol bath, denatured alcohol, and then it has to be cured. So it does require gloves and goggles and possibly a mask, but I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Definitely a mask. <laughs> The cold is hitting me here. Um, this back corner is just our sink. We've got a first aid kit there. This is our, like underneath all of the machines, I don't know if you noticed, but we have a lot of cabinets are, that roll in or are attached and we store a lot of other materials uh, in there as well. So let's see. Then we have our sewing machines back there in that corner. They're not set up in this. Um, they're not set up in this video yet, but we do have quite a few sewing machines. Some of them are supposed to go out to branches to live there, but in the meantime, we have nine nine of them at the hive, plus a serger and a brother embroidery machine. Ooh. The serger embroidering machine embroidery machine I can't really run I've tried the embroidery machine but it does jam a lot I just need more practice with it but so we're looking for someone that knows how to use those um, and then this is our VR AR room so you can see that's the screen that's what you would see in the headset or with the headset the AR headset allows you to see in the room the VR headset goes over your eyes and so you're immersed in, in maybe rock climbing the Andes and the room has like a grid with a perimeter so you don't bump into the walls and things. But that is dedicated to VR and AR. This is the recording studio. Wait, 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 wait. go back to the VR just for a moment. That's not an Oculus. What is that one? Um, I'm not sure that we had, we just got a new one and- It's a really good one. Yeah, um, I, I'm not sure if this is the new model or the older model, but our software and our computer um, drive, it, it all needs to be updated because it was too powerful. So we're in the process of trying to fix that right now. So is there software where people can sculpt in VR and then 3D print it? That I don't know. That's a great question. I, I wonder uh, if your headset... It looks like that headset is stronger than the Oculus, which means you can do it. Mm. Just to throw it out there for people. Oh, maybe. Anyway, sorry. No, that's a great question. Thanks for sharing that. I didn't know that. See, I love it. I learned something new. So this is the recording studio. On this tripod would normally be our camera. You can see we have overhead lights and lights. Uh, that you can move around on the floor, mics, the green screen. We have um, a Scarlet here and a computer that you can use in this room. And then we have another recording studio booth here that you could record from this large room into this small room. You can also record in this small room. So there's quite a few options. You can see there's another Scarlet interface here. We use that with GarageBand, Audacity, DaVinci. Um, there's the monitors are there. The microphones um, are stationary. We have four of those. And then we have other handheld ones. This is the podcast room. And like the studio recording rooms, they are all soundproof. So they have amazing quality. These, this has the same Scarlet interface. So you don't have to learn 
something new for each one. This room can accommodate three podcasters. Uh, so you can see it's pretty, it's pretty comfortable. And uh, the same, like I said, the same software with GarageBand. And so that is pretty much, I'll stop sharing that. That is our a, a little tour of what the hive looks like. Are there any questions about that? I have a question. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm wondering if, um, oh, well, when is the hive open? Is it open whenever the library is open or? Has special yeah. hours? Um, it's not fully open all the library hours yet, and that's the goal. Um, we just hired two new part-time assistants, <coughs> so, and there's me and another girl. <laughs> so we've been two people for quite some time. Um, so there is no, <laughs> and I'm, we're not even full time. So that also inhibits. Uh, us mm. being open, but it's open. On, it's not open on Sunday or Monday. It is open on Saturday from 11 to 3. Uh, Fridays from 9 to f no, 1 to 5. Tuesdays, it's open 1 to 9. Wednesdays, 1 to 5. And Thursdays, 1 to 9. So there are two evenings and um, three daytimes right now. Mm -hmm. For private groups, they do have like, we do have school groups that come in. So the high school kids come over in the morning. So it is, even though we're not open, it is in use. Mm -hmm. um, we have youth groups. The Moore Youth Center came the other day. Um, the Innovators for Purpose uses it on Mondays quite a bit. So there are definitely um, there's multi-use, so even when it's not open to the public, it's open to these public school groups. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, we opened in July. I was saying this to Janet. So we were supposed to open the week after the pandemic shut everything down. Mm. And then we were supposed to open in September, but they suddenly they decided, okay, July. <laughs> so we, you know, tried to do a really uh, fast opening and have materials and things and workshops for people to come in and learn about the machinery. So when people come in, they before they can use any of the machinery, we offer a virtual online safety training. And it's about 30 minutes long. It's pretty quick and easy. You take that and then you can sign up for workshops. We're not doing group workshops at the moment. Right now, they still have us as individual. And we've been doing one-on-ones, but I know that we're pretty booked out until the end of March. Um, it's hard because we just don't have enough staff and enough hours. So hopefully, we'll go back to workshops soon. And the workshops mm -hmm. fill up fast, but we now that we have a few more staff, we're hoping that we're, we can have more workshops. Mm -hmm. And now that we do the virtual safety training mostly online, that helps a lot because that frees up our time. And, so, and we can find that online, right? We can- Yes, everything, okay. there's, um, there's a link. I can send that out afterward. Um, if you go to the CPL page, the main page, and just click on the Hive, it will bring you to all the things that you need to know and all the equipment is listed there. There's a page that shows you what all the equipment does as well as how to sign up for it. So once you take the safety training, you sign up for a workshop for a particular machine. Let's say it's vinyl, the vinyl cutter. You come in for like an hour. You learn how to use the vinyl cutter. We teach you a little bit about design. Not a lot. We do offer design classes separate, but you do need to have a little computer design for almost all of it. And so we just show you the basics of how to transfer it, create something simple, transfer it, and how to print it out, and the how-tos. And then, you know, we're always available when you come in because, you know, you've only done it once, and we're there to shadow you until you really get the hang of it. And once, so once you've done that, then you get badged, and I think I took a badge with me. Yeah, I did. So you would get a badge like this. It would have your name on it here. 
and then mm -hmm. you can see it has a little icon of the mm -hmm. laser cutter. Mm -hmm. And so you would have that on your badge and then we'd know that you know how to use that machine. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that I brought some examples of things so I could just show you in person some of the mm -hmm. things. So the 3D printers, you know, they can make very useful um, tools. I, I actually made a really cool um, measuring tool, a calipers, because we were closed during the pandemic and we needed them. And so I found it on Thingiverse and I was able to download and not have to make it all myself. But um, I was very excited by that. So we've had people come in and make parts for their vacuum cleaners and uh, animal habitats, all kinds of things. And speaking of animals, so this was um, the girl I work with. She is really into these skulls and she 3D printed this one and then she painted it. And so um, you can see that you, we kind of, we start off really simple with like teaching this. And we say like this little name tag took 45 minutes to print. So 3D printing is very slow, very slow. Um, you know, you can, this would print in like seven or eight minutes. It's just a tiny little uh, paper clip. And the thing on the top is a little scribble, a scribble tool in one of the 3D softwares, which is a very cool feature. You can do things that are jointed. So that have hinges, you know, that move. This is all done in one piece. So you don't have to put it together. Uh, there's an app called uh, Lithopane, and it creates these. Um, you can, uh, so I know you saw that picture of the house, but you can take a picture, the picture of your house. Let's see if I can do this. And you can actually see through it. It's hard to do with my, here's, I'm trying to get my flashlight to actually come on. Oh, there we go. Okay. So maybe, oh yeah, a little bit. So you can oh. see it's almost like a night light. I can't quite oh. get that. Right and that's plastic. Here, but almost, there you go. You can see, but you can see there's that house. I made one with my cute little doll. Um, and that you can also do it with a cylinder so you could still put a candle into it and light it up. Unfortunately, uh, through my Chromebook, you can't see that, but you can see all the details. It, it's quite, um, it's quite cool. So, can I ask, was that on the Zing? Uh, not the Zing, the... Um, well, those are I, just... I was worried about the fire and plastic. Yeah, no, that's just a 3D printer. The, the regular PLA 3D printers that we okay. use, I did that on. Good. I don't have anything with me from the other one that does with the resin, but the one with the resin gives you even more details than that. So... Like if you reprinted the Eiffel Tower, you would get all those little, you know, pieces of metal putting it together. Um, I brought some other examples from the in, the engraver, the, the laser engravers. So these are just some samples that I put out to explain between score and engrave. So score, is more of like, it will take your letters and make more of an outline. And if you can see, it doesn't really cut, it's not carving out the wood like the engrave is. The engrave is taking all that away. It's mm -hmm. just sort of scoring into it. And it gives you a nice crisp line and it takes a lot less time. But it depends on how you bring your file in, whether you can get it to score or engrave. Sometimes you have to really create it. I'm not sure how um, much of the softwares that folks know. You can start off with something easy like Google Draw. You can go to Inkscape, Corel Draw. Uh, Adobe Illustrator is sort of at the top with Rhino. And those allow you a lot more capabilities because your files are created with more of an SVG, whereas the um, so those vector files have a lot more options, whereas the Glowforge, you can scan just a photograph or you can 
import like this was just a jpeg it's it's a digital portrait but it was just a jpeg that we scanned in and then i printed these in different formats so i tried some of the different options this one came out too dark i took the tape off of it their wood comes like this with a qr code and it comes with tape um it's like a washi tape over it and when I use a setting that is like sort of in the middle, it's about 270 lines per inch. You can see I really get the details. When I did it more like a draft, I didn't get all those details. But you can also just take a photograph. So here I have a photograph of a friend's dog. Now the first photograph was very dark and you can see that it came out all washed out. But when you clean up that photo, just even on your phone, you can see I've got all the lights and darks now in this, in this little um, mm. photo engrave. And so you can take things like, you can put a little sketch onto the Glowforge because it has that camera. I unfortunately brought the wrong <laughs> cutouts for people take them but these are like little doodles that people made and then I printed them out for them uh, you can just print those right out on the glow forge they take just a few minutes so in that sense you, there's a lot of ease like you could take a scribble drawing or um, a doodle and you could scan that right in the glow forge and print it out this one was the first thing I ever made I did it in google draw I just did this really tiny little line design. I just, I didn't want it to be anything fancy because I didn't want people to think, oh, I can't do that. And so I just took a picture of a bird and I traced over some of the lines with um, my mouse and the scribble tool. And, and then I laser engraved it and I cut it out. And the engraver, the laser engraver can take your shape like this and it can cut it right out if it's an enclosed shape but you can also insert an outline around it and then adjust that outline to get it almost the same as if it was cutting out right on around the line of it so there are a lot of options you can put uh, you can put shapes around them you can put squares circles other things there are a lot a lot of options with it one of the uh, another patron came in and she wanted to make some coasters for holiday gifts so we experimented with the settings on the coasters and she got quite a bit of detail um some of it got burned, burned a little but you know we use this as a tester so every time you know we usually have to you start on scrap you never start in your good stuff because if it doesn't come out you're you know you're not doing you're not doing yourself any favors. Um, it also will, you can laser engrave on leather, which smells really bad. I really suggest using vegan leather um, because oh. it smells terrible. But again, this is a vinyl sticker, but this was also made, I, you probably saw this at O'Neill because this was made into a 3D printed um, piece and it was also done in the Glowforge. So you can use that same file and use multiple machines. Mm. The house picture that um, Janet liked, I grabbed from a friend of mine and I took, let me see if I can hold it up. So the first one, the first one I did, I did it in what we call the SD graphic, which is about 195 lines print. I got some pretty good details. Um, and then I tried it with the SD, but because I had the tape on it, I lost a lot of it. When I went to the 3D option, I, it, it gave me some pretty good um, 3D pop, but it was still like a little bit, a little bit too much power. I wound up figuring out that if I lower the power, I get just the right settings for it. So a lot of it is trial and error and, you know, just like anything else when you sculpt or you you're making something you know you there's no exact science to it so um 
So those are just some examples. I do have some other photographs. Um, people have cut out fabric on the Glowforge, so I can share some of my photos. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Of things. I have a question, uh, Lori. Uh, yeah. When you're uh, when you're printing, um, are you uh, do you have any um, elements in the software to control um, uh, light and shadow, highlights and shadows, or is it just turning down the power or turning up the power? So both. So with the Glowforge, you can adjust the power, but with the but you can also you you have a little bit of control with the shading. The zing, so this is where the zing comes in. So it's again like the difference between an automatic camera and a and a manual, where you're going to set all those settings. So you can color map in this on the zing, and you can assign different degrees of gray scale to it, so you can have all of that shading. Um, I don't know if I have any examples in my photographs, but um, I'll look and see. I know somebody did one, like this guy has been coming in. He actually has built his own laser cutter. Let's see if the slideshow works. Um, so you can see he's actually engraving in on acrylic and those are all dots. So it's a JPEG image and he's doing that with the shading. So he's controlling the dots with how that comes out. And then let's see what's next. This might be, oh, that's the O'Neill display. More of that. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I, I'm trying to go out. This is us repairing the Sindo, um, repairing the laser cutters. Let's see. Let's go back this way. Okay. So uh, this is uh, one of our librarians. She does our outreach. She created this cribbage board. She was very Ooh. proud of herself. She's never made anything. She figured out how to use Google Draw. We helped her to create. So there's a couple of pictures of her with it. She was so excited. This was the cardboard one that we made to make sure that it was going to print the way she liked it. And this is the process. So you can see her looking at the computer with her design and the orange means that it's cutting and the blue is engraving on there. And she's entering all of uh, the directions to the laser cutter. Let's see, this is the 3D printer in action, printing uh, the hands that went into the O'Neill display. And in the middle of that are what we call supports. So the, in order for those hands to be printed, because they're in the air and there's space in between, we put in the, the Sindo actually can read that and say, oh, you should put supports in here. And the supports pop out pretty easily, but it helps to make sure that your 3D printed item comes out um, looking like hands and not, um, thank you, and not something different. Um, you can do things like, this works. And we, while I was practicing, I made a sign for, let's see if I can, no, I don't want to do that. I just want to skip, there we go. A sign for the uh, Angelo's Pizza across the street. Angelo retired, sold it to the guys at the counter and they changed the phone number and had new hours. And they had all these pieces of paper hanging up in the window when I got out of work one night. And since I was trying to practice with editing photographs and making an example of how you could use this for your business, I went ahead and made them a sign since they fed us all through the pandemic. Oh. <laughs> Figured it was the least we could do. So, and this is it in the laser cutter. Uh, you can see the light point coming out the laser light and it's engraving the hours. This is fabric. So a young woman comes in, she goes to the School of Fashion Design down on Newberry Street, as well as fabric, fabric, fab, uh, not fab lab, but the fabric lab. 
So um, a fab, I should say Fabric Academy. So there's Fab Academy and there's a Fabric Academy, which mm. is sort of a spin-off of a Fab Lab, which is essentially a makerspace. At the Fab Lab, they train us and uh, they train, they offer like a master course where you can take it for six months and you learn basically all the ins and outs of all this software and how to build and create all of these so like electronics and the laser cutters and all of um all of the monofab everything so she made and i hope i have a picture of it here but she made this beautiful shawl that she cut out all these squares and these pieces and i think she made jacket mm. and shorts with this but she cut everything out in the laser cutter and then assembled it mm. without any without sewing it at all. Whoa. Yeah, it was, it's quite beautiful. I, I'm not sure that I have a picture of it. Um, this is John, He's he was trying to lead us in an electronics how-to for um, folks on how to create these circuit boards. And he cut out a whole bunch of cardboard how to's um, and they were hanging up in the O'Neill display. This was a middle school group that came in to figure out the space. This is part of the display that's up at Maine right now. So we have a button maker as well. Um, this, these were done in the embroidery machine. So you don't have to just embroider onto something. You can actually just embroider. <laughs> and create something. Um, I think these were, M made these and I think she was going to add LEDs to them. This is the circuit board that I was telling you about that John made. And these are ones that I did. So that's um, an option. And this is there, we have these um, VR sets that you can use that you can put your phone into. So we have those for kids. Uh, these are more examples of things. So the laser cutter can also make puzzles and stamps. Uh, we did, oh, here's her, let's see if I can blow that up. Oh, I can, look at that. So, oops, <laughs> well, it was a nice try. Let's see, stop there. So that's the shawl that Vicki made with the laser cutter. And there's a puzzle maker. And if you look here in the middle, there's a little piece that is part of, um, uh, is it an old book? It's a reed for his musical instrument. So John, who was also doing the oh. circuit boards, he, he would have to hand cut all his reeds for his instrument. And he, he made a little jig and he figured out how to make them in laser cutters and almost so that they're almost complete. He still has to hand file them, but it takes quite a bit of the time out. So um, that's one thing, that's my dog. And I was practicing just making different kinds of uh, photo engraves. There is a little lantern box there. And then let's see, let's see, books. Let's see what else is in there, I think. This is mostly the 3D things that I showed you, but we did make a 3D press, uh, print and press, and it actually does print. So you could, you know, you could make functional items as well. This guy here, the Pokemon with his, um, is made in the, the resin printer, as well as that Eiffel Tower, which you can't quite see, but almost. Um, and then we also have, an app where you can make a 3D, um, what's the word, a scan of yourself, and then you can print yourself on, in the printer, the 3D printer. And it's very accurate, I have to say, very accurate. And then let's see what else I have. Well, that's just the whole display. Those are just our papers asking for suggestions. Most people want sewing. Sewing is very much, um, oh, here I can show you these because they're fun. 
this is what I was talking about. So this is his reed getting cut out. You can see how he has it taped down and it cuts it out. This is it in the Glowforge. And then this is what he sees on the screen as he's doing it. So he can align up what he's doing by using that camera. This is another one of those litho panes. You can see it as a little night light. You get a better idea. Pinball machine. Someone came in and made a map. Um, he was actually uh, my son's age. He he he'd gone to school with him, <laughs> so he's a little CRLS grad. But this was, I think, Boston. Boston or Cambridge. I'm not sure if I assembled it correctly, but um, he shrunk it way down and those were all the buildings. So I think it is Boston. So that came out pretty cool. We were able to 3D print that in different parts. There he is holding it. So that came out pretty cool. These there must be, um, there must be some cost for the materials. So right now we supply everything and it's free. So eventually we'll, we may charge people if they use a certain amount or over a certain amount, I'll say. But for right now, we are supplying the materials and it's, so it's all free of charge. We have, we don't have all the materials that we would like. It's just really hard right now with the pandemic, but um, we have a pretty good array, you know, array of it. This is the 3D printer that I was telling you, the one that uh, with resin. And this print had just finished it. It, it prints it upside down, it hangs from this bed and then this goes into the wash and then into the cure. And it was actually like Da Vinci's, one of his um, sculptor, sculpt, sculptures. And I sadly don't have a picture of the <laughs> finished product. Um, I think that's mostly what I have. I didn't, I wasn't able to upload a, all the photographs. We were having some technical issues. Was the Da Vinci piece downloaded from Thingiverse or something else? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it was like when we first got started, usually we try to create our own files, but we also do take files that we know actually work. <laughs> Like, mm -hmm. and when you go on Thingiverse, if you, you have to read the comments and you have to make sure that they have been printed, they've been updated because they update the software all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, we've taken some simple things so that we know that we can just run those as a test without having to create it. Hmm. And so if I you, I was, I really needed them. <laughs> so. I was just wondering if, um, what type of wood do you have there or? Right now we have maple and a little bit of basswood, mm -hmm. some cherry, some walnut. I only have walnut in small pieces. Like they're six Expensive. by 12. Yeah. But I have a few pieces of cherry that are the full uh, 12 by 20 sheet. I have a little bit of draft board and some acrylic, clear acrylic. We're trying to get more materials. They have not been in stock. So most of the stuff we have is thicker, uh, which is like a quarter of an inch versus an eighth of an inch. The eighth of an inch is fine for some some things, but like when I did this, the 3D engrave, it really should have been on a quarter inch because as if you notice this one, it bowed. Yeah. I mean, it turned out <laughs> to be kind of nice because it stands up on its own, but the thinner wood tends to bow if you put a lot of heat onto it and you're engraving it quite a bit. Uh, the same with the acrylic, we only have what they call medium acrylic, which is the eighth of an inch. And it's um, for making stamps and some 
other things. It's just not, uh, you would need thicker one and mm -hmm. they haven't had any. And we can probably get it from somewhere else, but you know, one of our problems is being part of the city, we have to have contracts with places where we buy things too. So that makes it another level of complicated. <laughs> so but we do have quite a few different materials in there. We have copper for circuit boards and we have like a lot of the soldering station supplies. We have um, we have like thread and bobbins and scissors and things like that for the sewing machines. We do even have some fabrics, not a lot, but you know, we have pieces for sure that you can practice with, make a little something. Um, Would you like some fabrics? <laughs> right now, I'm not allowed to take okay. donations, okay. right? Okay. But um, in the future, yes, <laughs> we probably would. So, um, hmm. Yes. Laura, hi, I have a question. Um, would I'm just wondering, like I've made um, etchings with copper plate and would, if I wanted to copy an etching and maybe do some modifications on it, is that possible? Yes, um, it depends how you wanna do the modifications. I've done etching too. I actually have some etching plates that I found from like my college days and I was like, oh, I think I'll bring one in. And I have um, some drawings that were these in really incredible doodles. And I thought, oh, I'll put one of these on an etching plate. And then you can adjust, you can adjust it a little bit from, like you could scan that design in. I would suggest not scanning it with their camera, but scanning it on a scanner. And then um, once you have that, if you wanted to make some modifications on that file, you could. And then you could save it in, like we tell people to save it in all the different formats as a PNG, a JPEG, an SVG, and a PDF. The Glowforge doesn't like to read some of those the way that you intend them. Mm. Uh, the Zing does a little bit better if you can import them into Adobe Illustrator versus um, doing them in Inkscape and Corel Draw, but so, but for basics, like you could just scan that, make it a JPEG or a PNG, feed that into the Glowforge. You could adjust the line somewhat. It does have some controls. You could go in and hand. You can add like they. It does have a line feature. I haven't figured out how to make it really wavy yet, but I haven't had a lot of time to do that. But it has it has some features. Um, but you could absolutely do that. Depends on how much time you want to spend on that too. But for for total basics, you could start just making an etching right from what you have, and then seeing how that comes out, and then going back and and making some changes to it. Wow, that's great. So do you have copper plate? Um, I don't have copper plate. I do have a little bit. I have like the, the metal like we would use in school. Mm -hmm. I don't, mm. um, and I have to look up and see. I, I'm pretty sure you can engrave on copper, but I don't remember seeing that on my list. It might uh -huh. have to be metal. It might have to be aluminum. Oh, OK. Or nickel. I don't know. Maybe nickel. I'll have to Google that too. There are some things that can't go in the laser be cutter because of the toxicity. Right. And the fumes and just, um, you know, the flammability. Sure. So, this is, this is absolutely is incredible. Yeah, this is it's really, it's an amazing space. I'm telling you. I'm really blown away by what I, you have. Once, once you get in there, like, like I had an artist teacher friend that I used to teach with who came in, to, I gave her some supplies like that we'd throw out like the scraps of wood and stuff. And I said, oh, come on over and grab some of these from the art room. And she was literally jumping up and down from life as she did. I can imagine, of course. Right? Yeah. And she was like, oh, like, like she couldn't decide what she wanted to start with first. And it was like, you know, and it's, it's definitely trial and error. I mean, I spent a good month 
literally like just feeding stuff into the machine and seeing what happened and like getting the controls like in the power settings and things right and figuring out how to feed in certain files that I know would work a certain way just so that like I can tell patrons when you come in oh I've seen this happen before at this file let's just try it this other way we there's a workaround we can just print out your design and put it in the glow forge at the very least and you'll get you know I mean you for us, the quality in the eye that we have is not what the general public has. Mm -hmm. So we may want something at a higher process, but even just starting with the low process and then we can get there to the high process. But for some folks like like that, just like, she had some really interesting details on this court, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know, that was like my neighbor, her son came in from his high school class and took it and went home and said, Oh, hey, mom, I went to this space. You know, <laughs> I see them every day and walk the dog. They had no idea. You know, they're like, This is great. <laughs> so, Lori, would, would you be available or somebody else at the hive? Like, I guess you make an appointment to come in and use the space. Mm -hmm. Would somebody like yourself be there to help walk us through? Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. wow. So, take the hive safety training online. There's a couple of classes this week. Okay. 30 minutes. Once you do that, you can email us at the hive at cambridgema.gov. And you can say, you know, you want to come in and learn how to use a machine. I, like I said, I think right now we're booked pretty much through the end of March, but I'm hoping that they're going to, you know, get rid of the restriction on groups soon and just let groups come back. So we can have a class of like 10 people or six people, you know, instead of having to do these one-on-ones for an hour and we can have six people in an hour. That's great. So, um, so you know, I'm hoping at least by April, but right now, I think March is like a set in stone. It's mm -hmm. not going to change because once the calendar goes up, they're not going to change it. So but, Lori, is this only available to Cambridge residents? No, anybody. Oh, it's available right. to anybody. All you need to do, like I said, is take this safety training. Oh, great. I mean, you can always just come by and when we're open and look around and look at the space in person. You great. Can use that That's great. You can get a better idea of how to use the machines um, just in seeing them in, in action. And then you can sign up for the workshop. Once you, like I said, once you take a workshop in a specific, on a specific um, tool, you get that badge and then you can, they have what we call equipment and studio time. So like Saturday from 11 to three, you can sign up to use any of the machines, you know, and whenever they're available. So, you know, they, that, that's about the only problem is they fill up fast. Yes. So um, I can't remember, you have so many, it's just like a Disneyland, oh, it's amazing. Do you have a machine that, um, if you were to make some kind of designs and figure out colors and everything else that you wanted, it could print onto fabric or onto any kind of surface. You really yeah. could, could, you could design your own material. You could, you, you could, could print. I, the only thing is that you could laser engrave on the material, but I, I, it wouldn't be in colors, but you could hand color on the material. I, it doesn't really do colors. It, it can huh. do grays, you know, grays. Um, oh. You like could do vinyl. You can do it in vinyl. The vinyl vinyl, yeah. vinyl is usually one color at a time as well. I mean, you could do overlays, oh. you know, things like that. Like that, you know, that would be like the next level. But um, but yes, you could do things like that. Hmm. Um, oh, and can you just say you can etch glass? No, I have etched glass and I have etched stone, so. Yeah. Oh, I want to edge some oh, glass. Wow. I've only done acrylic. I didn't know you could do glass. That is very exciting. Yeah, you can do glass. You and can, can you glass. add color to it or is it just clear etching? Just you could so apparently you can paint the glass and then you can etch through it. I haven't tried that yet. Um there are people like on the Etsy sites, like those are the like those are the things to kind of you got to do some Google and research. Yeah. People 
do it and they post about it and that's the best way to learn yeah mm -hmm. i haven't been able to get like that far yet this is like I an artist asylum this is incredible <laughs> except yeah, it's free it's free, it's free. Okay. yeah and open because the artisan's yeah. asylum isn't so all, i mean okay. you only need a minuteman library card and you know they'll give you one on the spot wow. so. that's <laughs> extraordinary yeah um, lori can you put the, um the training into the um what's, yeah. my, what's it called yeah. uh, the chat. Chat. thank you the chat because i yeah. looked online and i couldn't find it and i'll so i can send it around to everyone all right hold on let me get some here. it's been so amazing i really want to thank you and yeah. thank jen for talking with you to set this up it's really wonderful i wouldn't have known about it well it's um i know getting the pr out for it isn't easy because of the whole pandemic but we're 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 trying so all right, i'm putting the this is the main our main page on the library great and that will give you um That's... that will take you to where you can sign up for all the choices I think that's where I've been going to. And then I go to how to get started. And it keeps wanting me to do something in like it. I'm not finding a virtual one that's um, anytime. I keep having to sign up for, or, or wow. maybe. Look on the calendar. So yeah. on Tuesday, I'm pretty sure. So there's okay. a high safety training on Tuesday. Two twenty two 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 two. Yes. <laughs> twenty twenty two. So at six thirty, there's a virtual training. Uh, I see. It's called high safety training. Yes. Okay. I was just training. expecting a link so I could do it on my own. No. So we lead you through it. So one of us will lead you through it. There's another one on the twenty fourth at six p.m. as well. Okay. Um, well, that, that's the one I'll sign up for. <laughs> um. Then. Yeah, I don't know what's on. Wednesday to the Wednesday. Okay, how do you find the one? Thursday. And there's a Google Drawings. And then it doesn't look oh Wednesday. It's interesting. We have nothing on Wednesday. It must be something special going on. So yeah, so you just sign up for that virtual training. Mm -hmm. It's 30 minutes. It's pretty easy. We just talk about just how to use the space and be safe in it and what to do in case something happens. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much all common sense, but. I, I did want to tell everyone um, that, though I think now that I've seen the hive, I do think it's superior. I shouldn't be saying that, but the hatch is in Watertown and you can also use them, though maybe yeah. they've um, gotten new equipment. The hatch is amazing as well. They, yeah. and you know, they do things in a way that we haven't been able to like they have great volunteers who teach sewing and you can bring your sewing machines in and they'll teach you how to use your sewing machine besides theirs and mm -hmm. the woman who works who's volunteers in there can take your machine apart and put it back together with our eyes closed it's like Ooh. yeah and they so and they have a guy who retired who donated all this arduino stuff and he teaches it all the time and he's <laughs> amazing and then they, they like, so they have a zing. They don't have a glow forge. They have a zing. Um, but they, uh, they also have, they have a different vinyl cutter. They, but they have heat um, press vinyl already. Mm -hmm. They have other things. I send people there a lot because um, they supplement us and vice versa. And um, you can learn some things from them that we can't offer right now. And mm -hmm. the same. And then at in Somerville, there's a, a new at the high school. It's called Fabville. They just opened, and they, Alex is the guy who runs that space. They have similar machines, a little different. They have like a black hat laser cutter, which is um, amazing. Uh, and mm -hmm. some other things and they run they have a cnc machine as well i think theirs is much bigger um they offer also classes and um 
things that you can go and take and use. And now my colleague went to Weston on Saturday. I haven't been to that makerspace yet. And Lexington, I'm pretty sure is putting one in, in Concord. Um, there is another one in West Newton. I'm not sure if they're reopening or not, but um, they have a small one in Medford has like a tiny one room, um, one person who runs it that I happen to know <laughs> from another colleague, but, um, but they're catching on. So, yes. So what was, I think, Jen, you mentioned something called the hatch in Watertown. Mm -hmm. What is, what is that? It's it's um not at the Watertown Library, but it's like a block or two away. I never remember the address, and it's a makerspace. Yeah, and it's called the Hatch. The, the Hatch. hatch. It's, it's part, part of, of the of library. H A P C H. Public Libraries. Um, mm -hmm. So that's their makerspace. It's around the corner from Demos. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. That little that's street cool. that faces the Dunkin' Donuts and the Starbucks there. It's right there. Okay. And um, Liz, who used to run it, just switched over to the arts, which is very exciting that Watertown's finally like getting an arts person. Oh, yes, yes. Right? I know, I'm so excited for her. I was like, I'm, I'm, so bummed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is great. And so I haven't really met the new person there. I've been meaning to go in, but I got sick like way back when, and I've been still trying to catch up. So, mm -hmm. uh, I will get, I love it. I love going in there. And like, I actually need to go there and solder something because my station's on set up yet. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then MIT offers uh, different venues, sometimes to the public, mostly through school groups or teachers, um, but maybe through NOCA, they would offer you something because they, um, their Egerton Center which is run by Diane Brancazio, who is also my neighbor and I've known for like 30 years, another amazing person. Um, they, offer, they offer classes there that are amazing as well. Hmm. Those I, I think you have- for these, but if you happen to have a list, I, I don't want to put you out, but if you happen to know, it, you can maybe send me an email and I'll yeah. send it around to people. Because I knew about a few of these, but not Somerville or MIT and right. Minuteman so, I've known about in Lowell, yeah. but you need people to get into them. So, Yeah, some of them just opened up like November. Um, I had a list prior to the pandemic and sadly, like a lot of them, I don't think are Okay. reopened yet some of them so I ha um, I have to work on that I'm hoping to host conference of all the library makerspaces or even just makerspaces in Massachusetts or within an hour of us so that people could travel and come because there's an amazing one in Providence as well where <laughs> I'm not sure exactly where but it's it's downtown, it's definitely downtown. I mean, Providence is pretty small. I grew up there, so you would think I know where this is, um, but I don't because it's new and I haven't been there yet, but- um, You know what it's called? No, I just know it's a cool mega space. When M comes back, I will ask her. It's on my list to go. I, like, I, I said mm. to my coworkers- I, need My son go. lives there and I'd love to tell him about it. Oh yeah, he may know. I, I may be able to just Google it and find out. Um, okay, so you just look up Makerspace Providence. I would and see what comes up. It probably will come up. Yeah. Um, they definitely have an amazing one too. Um, and there's another one I think out in Worcester. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. I, I have to go back to my list. I had just started doing that prior to us closing down. Mm -hmm. and then people moved around and right. I think Actually, Fab Academy might list them all and it might be more up to date. You can look there. I'll put that in the okay. chat. So Thank Fab you. Academy are the people who train us. And like I said, they offer, you know, if you want to be a master maker, like six months, they offer, um, hmm. it's not very much money, maybe two or $3,000, but they also have scholarships. So if you know, someone who's interested 
they they run like six months at a time so they just started one that's january to like june and what is the person after they've done that training what did, what can they do what do they do so basically you would be uh certified to use all of those kinds of equipment all the equipment that i showed you in my presentation wow. well probably not the recording studio but um but all the other stuff in the makerspace part so mm -hmm. any of those machines wow. they, you would be able to use those and you know maybe go out and run a makerspace maybe you're going to you know pick one of two of those things that you're going to create with or mm -hmm. um i mean there's a lot of possibilities so yeah fantastic mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at their courses right now. I'm like, uh, uh, some of them look like it's a major dedication of 20 to 30 yeah. hours a week. Yeah. So it's, it's, right. it's, it's, like it's really learning how you can uh, <laughs> take care of the equipment. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's very, it's a very intense six months. Mm. You, I mean, you could do something else on, uh, simultaneously, but you know, you really, you're going to give a good part of your day to that yeah. to becoming a maker so yeah mm. but very cool all right john it thank really you is. and do come in just do come in and you know introduce yourselves to me i will I won't recognize anyone with their mask and all the other paraphernalia things, hats hoods <laughs> I've signed up for Thursday, so I am. I will see you online Thursday. <laughs> Look at you, Jen. You're ready to go. <laughs> I've I've worked at the Hatch and I've done I've done all this, but not in the last you know not in a while. So um, yeah. yeah, oh, I'm definitely raring to go. Though of course, there's a side of me that's like, I don't know what I want to make. Um, right. uh, you know, I'll end up making little Christmas ornaments. You know, that's, you know, right. so why not thank you so much this, thank this you. is just You're extraordinary welcome. you just opened up a whole world here it is yeah. it's a whole new world and you know you can definitely take advantage of it i mean i just think it's a great resource and it's all yeah. free so. it's i didn't even know it existed thank yeah. you so so much I'm so glad You're i have very welcome. one question for you laurie which is maybe more technical so burl i'm really sorry uh, it's okay i'm gonna go now but thank okay. you Good. I'm really glad. Yeah. So, great to see you all. Bye. 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 Um, bye. So, um, so I know Adobe Illustrator, and I believe that the new versions now have 3D in it. Mm -hmm. Is that when I was working with a 3D printer, I was actually using the Oculus to make three dimensional sculptures. And then I was printing them out on, and this, this is two years ago though, prior to COVID. So, right. um, so I'm wondering, does, which is the best application in the Adobe suite to maybe make a 3D model? Do you have any idea of that? I know saving it as an art board for sure helps, but I haven't done anything in 3D in Adobe yet. I'm still learning Adobe. I did a little bit, I learned a little bit of Rhino and Rhino yeah. does have the 3D capability. Yeah. Um, I used Rhino, God, six years ago. It's gotta be Luci much better. Luciano who runs Fab Academy swears by Rhino. That's, okay. his, that's his go-to. Mm -hmm. We have Adobe Illustrator, which I didn't get to mention to folks. I'm sorry, I forgot. They're not I gonna wanna remember. learn it. I forgot to spit it out. We have them on like, we have like 10 Macs that have Adobe Illustrator and other programs that you would normally pay for, but we have the licenses. You yeah. can't take them out, but you can come in and work on them in there. Um, I'd say create something s simple. You know, don't try to make the Eiffel Tower. Come in with something really simple and yeah. you'll give it a whirl. And then, yeah. you know, go from there. And honestly, that's the best way because it's hard to know what you don't know. Like, I never know how it's going to read the the file the file and stuff i was just curious about that um and i'm curious about your vr space i'll definitely come in um i'll do the thing on thursday and i'll look at your hours and i'll drop by um okay. i do yeah, have VR, some... that vr has <laughs> new one that we have is the it's like whatever the latest model is 
Yeah, did, it looks like the one that was the fancy one, which- Yeah, um, and I, I'm sorry, I can't think of the I, name. I can't remember, name. it's like, I just remember their ad with the whale. Yeah. And the cool oh, thing yeah. is because- we, I did the whale thing with it. Yeah. But the problem is that our, is that our computers mm -hmm. are the old, like, I need to update, like we need to update the whole system because it keeps crashing and freezing because the new headset is so advanced. To it, the it is, yeah. And I'm looking for it right now just to get the name, but I, it's going to drive me crazy because I remember when this came out and, um, and I'm totally not finding it on here, but it was, um, I love it because it has the glasses here and the pack back here. So it's balanced right. yeah. versus I use the Oculus and it's great, but it's, it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it sits on your nose. <laughs> it's, it's really yeah. heavy. So that is great. And I was really curious about the other one um, when it was like two and a half years ago and it was supposed to come out and it didn't on time. So yeah. that's why I was, I was curious about it. It's going to, it's going to be driving me crazy. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to find out on Tuesday. I no, it'll come to me. Like the moment we get off the phone, I'll be right. like, which one is it? It's the, um, ah, anyway. You know, I don't a, use VR yeah. so much. I, um, I like drew the line when they, when they got on the new equipment, I like, it was it magic was, leap. So much it's trouble it's the magic leap, right? That might be it. I'm not it's sure. I'm not even sure what it's called. Like I can't even remember. Like it looks like the magic leap. <laughs> so th that's why I was wondering because I'm like, it looks like the magic leap. And um, yeah, I, I haven't used cool. it since December because we had to disconnect it and yeah. put the whole the old headset. And then we haven't been able to do any VR training just because we didn't have enough staff. And so Ooh. What do you want people to do in VR? They can do whatever they want, really. I mean, we mostly have games that are just like yeah, that's uh, not really places they can go and visit, like you know, and transport themselves basically. There's but, there's some nice educational ones where you can go to Petra and some other places, or the um, the airline. Uh, you can learn to fly a flight yeah. simulator. Yeah, I I'm pretty sure we have some of those. I, I don't yeah. know how many, but um, I know we've like I, I think I, caught, I climbed Mount Everest or something. And <laughs> wow! <laughs> right? I was like, this is the closest I'm ever gonna get because a I hate snow and cold, and b <laughs> and b not, I don't want to die. Right? <laughs> Sorry. Not on my bucket list. <laughs> I keep thinking the people that did that. You know, yeah, they put them their lives at risk to uh anyway. Yeah. So though yeah. I, I remember just a few months ago, it was a year ago, that there was so many people at top of Mount Everest that there was a line and that people were dying because they were freezing to death, waiting in line to get to the summit. And oh, anyway, no. just uh, uh yeah. <laughs> anyway, but this is great. Thank you, Lori. I am so sorry that more people, I'm actually going to stop the recording. So um, stop recording.